enjoy the show. Uh, MC today is going to be the lovely Sudashana Sophie. Give her a round of applause. Uh, we have a very interesting lineup today. Uh, first up, we have Jyoti. Jyoti, if you could set up, please. Uh, Jyoti has a dubious distinction of having tea with the Queen at Buckingham Palace. Uh, let's not hold that against her. She's a computer. She's a computer programmer turned strategy consultant. And Jyoti is going to be giving us uh, feedback on our presentations today. Um, tell us a bit more about you, Jyoti. Welcome, everybody. Good evening. I happen to be a professor at one of the oldest colleges uh, in California, the third incorporated entity in the state of California, St. Mary's College, which is near Berkeley in Moraga. I teach management of technology and innovation and business strategy. And I'm here this evening uh, with three things to offer you. The offer I have for you is about lightning talks. I'm here as a volunteer saying I know something about making quick, short presentations about technology and innovation, about business strategy, which is what I think most of the presenters here today will be doing. And I hope some of you in the audience plan to do that in the future. And I am here with the offer to say, if you would like me to help you with that, um, strictly as a person who gets excited about these things, I'm happy to volunteer my time uh, before you do the presentation to look it over and during the presentation about how you, you got through the message that you want to or not and after the presentation about what might be some next steps about your product or service or whatever it is that you're pitching. So um, that's why I'm here today and um, the reason I'm doing this today is it's 5th of September. For most of you, you can tell I grew up in India. It's celebrated as Teacher's Day. And everything I know, I learned from my teachers. And when I tried to say to them, thank you for teaching me, they said, my teachers did that for me. Just pass it on. So that's my, the basis of my offer. I'm just passing on what somebody else entrusted with uh, me. Uh, apart from... Um, Doing these things, I like painting, I like dancing, and I want to congratulate all of you for having taken your first step in being here this evening. Uh, we have maybe a minute for Q&A. And I've brought some business cards which you're welcome to take later and talk to me. Thank you. Thank you, Jyoti. Uh, speaking of teachers and Teachers' Day, may we whisper a silent thank you to Obi-Wan and Yoda, please? Really? Teachers, we are thanking Yoda for his teachings. Do or do not, there is no try. Nobody is laughing. Why aren't you laughing? Is it the beer or me? <laughs> uh, next up, we have Martin and Raul. If you could set up, please. Martin and Raul are from Latin America, Uruguay, and uh, they are here for TechCrunch Disrupt. And we actually convinced them to present uh, Monkey Learn uh, before uh, TechCrunch Disrupt. Now what Monkey Learn does is uh, it creates artificial intelligence applications out of the box. So you do not need to know about natural language processing or machine learning yourself, but just integrate their uh, solution. You guys have the con. Nice introduction. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> hey guys, uh, well, I'm Raul. I'm uh, here's, here's Martin. And okay. We are co founders of Monkey Learn. We are very excited to be here. And uh, well, uh, Monkey Learn is uh, text mining made easy. We wanted to create a tool to easily extract and classify information from text. So Every developer, without having an LP or machine learning background, could uh, use it. Okay. Uh, let's go to the first tab. Yeah. 
So uh, monkey learning is used, is, is, is used in three simple steps. You have to create your account, and then if you want to, uh, to create, for example, a text classifier, you create a category tree of, of with the hierarchies that you want to uh, assign to, to the text. And then you have to upload text data for each of the categories. After that, you, you hit uh, the train button, and voila, you have a text mining classifier. Uh, it uses machine learning algorithms on the, on the background. We work with Python and scikit-learn. Uh, we have a very simple to use uh, web interface. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. At the left here we have uh, the, uh, the category trees where you can you know, add as many categories as you want. And after you train the algorithm, you get statistics of how well the algorithm works, like precision or recall. Uh, and when you're ready to, to go, you can uh, test the the algorithm within the the app. You can paste paste some text, for example, a product descri description or an, or a product review, and extract, for example, to extract a sentiment analysis. And uh, after that, you can uh, integrate with any programming language. Uh, an API is instantly published to the uh, to the web. Uh, we got, we have also called snippets for different uh, programming languages. We have snippets for Python, PHP, uh, Java, uh, but you, you, you can't call the API with, uh, from any programming language. Um, we, we have been in a close alpha with a, a prototype and uh, right now on Monday we'll be launching our public uh, beta, so go ahead and, and register for an account and uh, we'll have some some uh, coupon calls if you, if you want yes. and something else uh, we're very happy to be launching here we are uh, very happy for you guys to try the platform give us feedback and to answer any question that you have about the platform so you typically uh, extract the data from the text that you are using yeah uh, we wanted to create a higher level uh, text mining toolkit. Right now we have many tools like NLTK, but are, they are so uh, low level that you, have s you need some experience with NLP or machine learning to use them. So the idea is that you can create a high level text mining model like, like classification, as you said, for example, to, to create sentiment analysis or topic detection or uh, language detection. We have pre-created models for different industry verticals like retail or advertising or news, but you can create your own uh, classifier with your, your particular data. How do you charge for it? Uh, the pricing, uh, you have a freemium business model, so you can start for free with all the features. Uh, when you are ready to go to production, we have a developer plan for 20 bucks. Uh, then 150 and 500 dollars per month. We charge um, scaling on the amount of queries that you can do uh, every month. Okay. How, how many requests can you get for the developer plan? Currently, uh, the developer plan has uh, 10,000 uh, queries per month, but we are still, uh, you know, uh, rating. Yeah. Rating yeah. Have you heard of the company called Diffbot? Sorry? Diffbot, D-I-F-F-B-O-T. Diffbot, mm, no. no. Same space. Um, yeah? yeah? Right, I'll check, check it out. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What is the opposite of a startup? <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually. Our fourth speaker is Adam, who has a long-distance ride-sharing app, and he's going to be talking about uh, when to kill your startup and why. I guess I will use technology. Hold on. Actually, screw technology. I'm just going to take this. Can I just take this and talk? Awesome. So, 
I don't like this thing. All right, cool. Hi, everyone. Adam Bress. Recently moved from Madison, Wisconsin to San Francisco. Glad to be with you all here today. Thanks to Willie, shout out to my friend who's a member here and part of the co-op with Export Abroad. He said, you gotta come down to the Hacker Dojo. It's super awesome. And I could tell that you were super awesome just even by Googling. So thanks for having me down here. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, thank you Sophie for the introduction. I wanna talk a little bit about end downs, but more than that is I just wanna kinda give you guys a snapshot. I'm a hacker and a founder. I've developed in Ruby on Rails and uh, I actually learned Ruby on Rails on a train, which is kinda cool. My last office was in a train car in Madison, Wisconsin that was just a stationary caboose and we rented it out for 750 bucks a month and had caboose co-working there. We had 13 members. It was pretty awesome. So that's where I learned Ruby on Rails and then I learned Angular and now I do some like, you know, everything, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm a hacker and a founder and uh, I'm working on co-ride.co right now. And yesterday I had a great conversation with the, the founder, one of the founders of RideJoy which is exactly my company, but just started four years ago and went through Y Combinator. And then two years ago, gave back $300,000 to their investors and were just like, like they just stopped. They just gave money back and stopped and said, we're not gonna solve the problem of long distance ride share, which is the problem that CoRide, my company of nine months, intends to, to solve. Uh, apps in the App Store, websites live, please join, whatever. But the, my main point is to give you guys like a snapshot of like, me right now as a hacker, as a founder, I you know, just moved to San Fran, I'm having these interesting meetings, and then this guy's saying, just stop. He was just like, don't do it. Don't, you, you shall not pass. So don't do this problem. Don't try to solve it. You won't be able to solve it. And he gave really cogent regions, reasons, because I think the guy is smarter than me. I mean, he's a really smart guy. So I was like, Shit, okay, someone really smart is telling me, don't do this. So it made me think about end downs. It made me think about old yellering. You guys know? Old yellering, your startup where you take it outside and boom, that startup's just got to end down at some point, right? You got you to gotta put it down. Um, Seinfeld famously says that you got to go, when you're a kid, everything's up, you know, grown-ups, shut up, look up to your elders, you know, but when you're old, everything's down, like sit down, quiet down, sh you know, shut down. So, you know, when you're a startup, you're doing startups, it's like you're tapping into something, you know, young and youthful and possibilities. When you're ending something down, you start to feel a little crick in your back. You start to feel a little bit like, I got to shut this thing down. So I'm at, this pit, I'm at a point that's not, not as fancy as it sounds. So everything I'm saying sounds really fancy, but I realize it's really just pivot or persevere. That's pivot and persevere. That's like bread and butter for us, right? You know, who's read The Lean Startup? Come on, everybody's read it. Come on, I know you're all not putting your hands up, but you've read it or you've heard about it because it's like in the air around here. They just blend it up and hit, you know, hit a, have a fan blow the particles around so everyone can, can breathe it in. So it's just a pivot or persevere moment, right? So Coride's got... Uh, month over month, 100%, you know, doubling of users every month. That's great, right? We have more than doubling of the number of co-rides posted and the number of requests posted. Okay, the problem is we only have $40 in revenue, right? Because all those co-rides that are being posted and all those requests that are being posted are like, San Francisco, woohoo, one, you know, a couple requests to all different places, right? And no, no, no co-rides. Tons of co-rides posted in, uh, you know, somewhere way over on the East Coast or like in Montreal or something. So, so there's like, they're not meeting, right? So that's kind of where co-rides at right now is we're going to try to build density. So it wasn't a bad meeting with uh, the ride joy guy. He was really good, again, smarter than me. So it was great to meet with him. And I, what I took away from that is that I shouldn't, I shouldn't end my startup down. I shouldn't turn it into an end down yet. It's still gonna be a startup. But I came away with some really good metrics uh, that are gonna become the basis of my next month of you know iterations. So we're gonna aim for driver growth and we're gonna aim for completing as many co-rides as possible. So we don't care about the number of users, we just care about kind of the, the, the success rate of those connections. So, and we've already come up with three or four strategies for how to do that. A lot of it has to do with like just going on Twitter and following everyone who follows Uber SF. Seems like a good kind of hacker way to get a bunch of users in San Francisco. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Thanks for everybody for listening. Thanks for documenting the manifestation of the will. And uh, take care, enjoy the rest of your evening. And I'll do questions if you like. You can clap.
Uh, he said shut it down because um, basically it boils down to like Americans won't use long distance ride share because there's enough cars and if you don't have if you don't have a car then you're like ew other people I'll just take a mega bus you know like, ew I don't want to like do that. As, but I mean he said it way smarter than that. He was like the beta of the blah 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 vectors. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to pay attention as close as I could. Honestly. It's true, yeah. So that, that was his argument, was that the fundamentals were really lacking. Um, I think there are good counterpoints to his arguments. So um, um, I think uh, when, he, when, he made, when he made RideJoy, it was, it was four years ago, and they started with a website, and they didn't even go live with their app until like a few months before they shut everything down. And we started with the app first and launched that, and it's been like a really good, better way than to use the website. And also, when he went live three years ago, uh, there was like Airbnb wasn't a thing. Lyft and Uber were like twinkles in their divine, you know, the eye of their creators. And and you know, so the entire market of sharing economy and of ride share and of all that wasn't there. So that is there now. So people know like, oh, I can like take a co-ride down to LA and then I can get an Uber around and then I can take a co-ride back. Like that's something that someone could think of. Whereas, Three years ago, people would have been like an Uber. You sound like a deranged, you know, German, you know, speaker of some kind. You know? uh -huh. Cool. So what do you think that oh. Uh, Uber is also launching and Lyft is also launching like uh, this uh, shared ride concept. Sure. So yeah, they're creating. Yeah, Uber. Yep, yeah, Uber Pool and and Lyft Line are fantastic. It's really part of city intra city carpooling and car ride doesn't do that. We just do between cities. So if you went from like here to LA or here to Portland or here to Sacramento. And uh, if you did a Lyft line or an Uber pulled like that, it costs you like $300, $400 or something. So yeah. Thanks for the great questions and thanks for everybody's attention. Thank you, Adam. Uh, one quick question before we wrap things up. Do you have a favorite Sean Connery impression? Do I have a favorite Sean Connery impression? Since you're so good at doing impressions. You pull a knife, no, he pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He puts your man in the hospital, you put his in the morgue. That's the Chicago way. <laughs> and on that note, uh, let's end the lightning talks for today. Have a happy weekend, people. Live long and prosper and uh, drink all the beer there is. pumping the beer.